USFL week number four. And um, we got something, you know, last night, or rather yesterday afternoon. Timing rules are now coming into effect midway through the season made to, you know, running clock after a, a complete pass in the first and third quarters. You know, that that rule change is going into effect after week four to make the game, you know, go on to that three-hour limit, you know, to try and appease, you know, Fox and NBC, you know. Got to get those games in in three hours. You know what I mean? Uh, now, this is about the weirdest rule change I think I've seen in a long time. I think I don't, I don't think I've seen something like this in a league before. I don't think I've seen something like this at all. And it just happened. Like, out of the blue. Like, Mike Pereira was like, yeah, let, we, we, we're changing this. You know, we're, we're doing this. Can do what we want. We're we're gonna do this. So it is what it is. I have no issue with it. Um, I mean, whatever. I mean, it's whatever. If it keeps the games up to three hours, whatever. If it doesn't, whatever. I mean, there's really no issue with it. I mean, we watch. I mean, a lot of us here, you know, watch that that sweet sweet indoor slash arena football. So running clock don't mean nothing to me. But the games do, and the games do, and, you know, this is supposed to be out on Thursday, but, uh, you know, that, that kind of changed things around, and then I still haven't felt very well the entire week, but it is what it is. Philadelphia, Michigan, late, that's going to be late Friday night, you know, 9 o'clock, where I am, 10, where most, where, well, where the East Coasts are, because East Coast is not the best coast for watching, you know, sporting events. But it's up to Case Cookus now um, for the Stars since Brian Scott is no longer going to be playing. You know, he, or at least he won't be playing for the, for the time being with his injuries. He had to go back home. And the Panthers, they need to continue to lean on their running game. Reggie Corbin, Stevie Scott, you can't lean on Shea Patterson. You can't lean on Paxton Lynch. You can't lean on those guys. Uh, Michigan is favored, though, by a point or so. The over-under here is 36 and a half. Um, taking Philadelphia with this game. Well, I'm just going to say that right off the bat. I'm not, sure what, I'm not sure how I'm doing on my picks, but I'm probably, you know, not at that point to where it's like, you know, you did good. Um, but, yeah, I'm taking Philadelphia to win this game. On Saturday, you got a, a doubleheader, an early, uh, early afternoon game, New Jersey and Pittsburgh. New Jersey favored by 9.5 that running game. And really, you know, it should be DeAndre's, DeAndre Johnson's show now. He should be the one running the offense for New Jersey. The running game has been on point for the Generals. They, continue, they need to continue to run it down Pittsburgh's throat. And the Maulers, really, they just need some type of spark. They need a W. They're going to have to get it on Saturday. On Peacock, no less. And then the late game, which, have, which was also flexed and I think, by the way, Birmingham, Tampa Bay. Um, the over-under here is... 41 and a half. Birmingham favored by three and a half now. Over unders and point spreads could change, but Jordan Tamu needs to continue to improve for the Bandits. You know, with Scooby Wright, the Marquis Gates, you know, they've been on a tear. And then you got to keep your eye out on Victor Bolden Jr. for Birmingham. Can Birmingham get a little bit more offense? You know, it seemed like at times Jamar Smith just, you know, it was. Ineffective. He was ineffective last week at times. Like his stat line was not very good last week. But I mean, that that could change this week. We'll see. And then Sunday, it's just one game: Houston and New Orleans. Uh, the over/under is the same as the Tampa Bay Birmingham game, which is 41 and a half. But New Orleans is favored by four and a half here. And Mark Thompson. I forgot to talk about him last. You know, little recap for um, week three. 
but he's going to have to continue to be the workhorse for the gamblers here. I, I do not trust you know, Clayton Thorson at all. And then the Kyle Slaughter, the Jody Dixon connection, you know, it must continue to be the break that the breakers need. And I think New Orleans, with also that defense of theirs, you know, they ran into Birmingham last week and they could not get they could not get the job done. But I think you know, uh, Houston and New Orleans are pretty both have some they have some pretty tough defenses. I'll tell you that much. And you know, this could be a good one. Um, I'm honestly thinking, you know, I don't think I might be watching the Maulers play anymore. So I mean, it it. It, it, it's really getting real rough out here for the Pittsburgh Mullers. They're looking like the Tampa Bay Vipers of the uh, of the XFL out here, just looking like a team that is not going to win any games at this point. That's just my thing. And then uh, the, other, the other games, really, you know, it's good. it's going to be three really good games, I think. Uh, again, I'm picking I'm picking Philadelphia, picking New Jersey, picking Birmingham, and I'm picking New Orleans. I know, I know, these are these. These are kind of popular picks, but not really. But in any case, what are y'all thinking? What do y'all think about the new timing rules that have taken that are going to be taken in effect this weekend? And with all that being said, I'll see you all Sunday afternoon with our USFL Week 4 recap. See ya.